Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a weekend vlog. I feel like I haven't filmed one of these in such a long time. I actually just got back from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with my mom, actually. We took a girl's trip. We just got back yesterday and I'm already hitting the ground running with a wedding today. And then I also have a wedding tomorrow too. Little outfit check for the day. I just have on this little shirt here. Then I just have on black jeans and I'm eventually going to have on sandals and everything too. And I already packed my stuff. I just have my brush belt and then I have my makeup case as well. Then I also have my tripod over here with my camera on top of it to go ahead and film for you guys. Okay, sorry the lighting is really awkward. The sun's coming in from the front and I had to pull down my visor. I'm here about five minutes early. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to set up now if I can get in the building. Life goes up and it goes down. I know my mom taught me that. I figured why we fool around so little. And we keep track of time. Being so serious, idiots. Thinking it will matter, keep me company downtown. Before the clock runs out Sun is shining but the rain is welcome too Friends are nearby, don't need another view Time is not on my mind but then it's you Oh, I love it when the love comes around And then I remember All things must pass But I'm not gonna wake up, wake up I'm not ready, let me have another day Don't wake up Cause I'm happy, I'm not going away No, no, not yet Whoa, no, not yet Whoa, no, no, not yet Whoa I'm afraid I'll end up nowhere They keep saying I'll be fine But how you know that I'll be there When it feels like I'm lying every time Someone else Friends are nearby, don't need another view Time is not on my mind, but then it's you Oh, I love it when the love comes around And then I remember All things must pass But I'm not gonna wake up, wake up I'm not ready, let me have another day Don't wake up, wake up Keep it steady, cause I'm happy I'm not gonna wake up came from kind of turned me upside down i just don't know what to do i want to spend the night at hers and bring her one of my t-shirts so it smells like her perfume now i really get what the love songs are talking about and i just want to tell her how i feel scream it out loud have you ever been in love? <laughs> sorry. I'm not going to be serious. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, wow, we had this one girl. You think no. she'd be an adult? She is not an adult. It <laughs> looks so good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's sunny. You can look at me in the mirror if you want. Yeah, yeah she's not serious. <laughs> Have you felt like you were out of breath when you saw her in that dress? When your heart is beating fast and you're sweating and you can't stop looking. 
Hey guys, I'm done with the wedding and it went really well. Oh my gosh, the bride looks so pretty. I ended up doing one of the bridesmaids first, then I ended up doing her mom, the bride, and then I ended up doing one of the girl's lashes. There's another makeup artist there that the bride had hired to do a couple of the girl's makeup applications. And one of the girls was complaining about how her lashes weren't put on right. The lashes were like not put really far in the inner corner and the liner didn't meet it in the inner corner. So it kind of just made the whole entire eye look kind of wonky. And I really hate to bash other people's like artistry skills and everything, but I got asked by that bridesmaid to completely redo her lashes. And I was like, you know what? I was like, let me just use my own. Lashes were a little bit too dramatic for what she actually wanted. And she was really grateful. She loved the lashes that I put on her. And then after that, I finished up with the grandma at the very end. And that is the one person that I didn't film. I think that is pretty much about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off here. All right, I'm back home now. I did come home all the way, drop my stuff off. And then I remember that I have to pick up lashes for tomorrow's wedding. So I had to stop at CVS. Also, they didn't have the multi packages of the lashes that I needed. Um, so I went ahead and just bought the individual ones, which are a little bit more costly. Really quick haul for you. These are the sponges that I usually get for my clients. They are the jumbo ones in case you guys are wondering, because a bunch of you guys always get the ones that are in the blocks that you have to like detach from each other. But I get the jumbo cosmetic wedges. That's why they're so much bigger than the normal ones that you guys find. I also got more makeup remover. I haven't ever tried this one. This is Beauty 360. This is CVS's brand. Then I also had to get another Kiss Lash Glue. I usually include one of these for my bride's touch-up kit and I was running out. I got another lipstick from Essence and I think this might be the one that I got before. I'm not really sure. It looks like this. It's just a really pretty nude color and I love the way that these guys smell. They kind of smell like peaches almost. These are the Ardell 420 lashes. These are the ones that I was running out of. I wish they were in a multi-pack. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not. The actual style of lash isn't super consistent for some reason. I love the ones that are fluffy and wispy like this but the multi-packs that they had for the 420s were a lot stiffer and they just didn't look as wispy if that makes sense like the quality was not the same. And I like the ones that are wispy like this. So I went ahead and picked up three individual ones. Then I had to pick up another waterproof mascara. I used the L'Oreal Lash Paradise mascara. Even though I am not doing all 10 people tomorrow, I do have to prep all the touch-up kits. My assistant is doing the two junior bridesmaids and the flower girl. So I really only have to pack full touch-up kits for um, all the rest of the girls. Pretty much what I'll be working on here. Let me go ahead and grab my kit because I did not bring that in here. Oh my God, guys, I'm seriously gonna cry. Literally all of my makeup just fell out of my kit because I didn't realize that it was open all the way and it fell on the floor and there's a lot of eyeshadows that shattered completely. Look at this mess. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. I'm trying not to cry. Oh my God. I'm literally gonna have to fix so much stuff. I might have to buy more things now. Talk to you guys when I've calmed down a little bit and like organized my stuff, cause I have a shit show. Yeah, I've never had this happen to me before. So this, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, I'm happy to report that your girl did calm down a lot from last time because I got all my stuff in order except for one thing pretty much. Guys, that was such a disaster, oh my goodness. Okay, let me show you what I did. So I basically refilled this whole entire lipstick palette, cleaned it up. Also did the same thing with this one. It was mainly the lipstick palettes that were kind of a mess. Then two of my brow powders broke in here. Probably gonna have to be using eyeshadows for brow powders tomorrow. Then all of my dark eyeshadows were intact except for the black one, of course. Luckily, I do have stuff from the artist Kit company and I'll show you guys how I repress them into the pans because I know a lot of questions came about when I do repress my stuff in the pans. This is the thing that I have not tackled yet. It's all my Ket Cosmetics face powders. I did actually repress those originally so I'm not freaking out as much but I'm just like stressing out at the fact that it's going to take me so dang long to repress those because it took me so long the first time. Yeah I don't think anything else broke honestly. Okay I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you guys how I repress some of my powders because I just repressed my black eyeshadow that broke. So I have this um, Arbor Press right here. This comes from the brand Panavise off of Amazon. This was totally supposed to be a one ton Arbor Press and I feel like I have to like really, really press down pretty hard or repress it a second time to be able to get it to work. But you do need a one ton one. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that one down below. These are the Artist Kit Company palettes. And then the pans that I'm going to be using 
are also from the Artist Kit Company. They are these right here. Yeah, these are sold on the Artist Kit Company's website and they specifically fit in these palettes right here. These are the palette 2.0s. Then I also have the Artist Kit Company molds. So you can do the square ones, which I have. And then I also have the little ones and then the rectangle ones. And then these are all the little blocks that fit in the molds. And I also go ahead and cut up little sheets of paper like this and you guys will see what I'm gonna use those for. And you also will need like clear little plastic paper like this. I don't know what this is called because the guy that owns the Artist Kit Company actually gifted these to me when I bought the molds. So I'm not sure what exactly um, this is called, but if I find it, I will definitely link that down below for you guys as well. Some of these I didn't press the right way the first time, so maybe I'll get it right this time. I feel like that one might break on me, so I think I'm gonna repress that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my sheet of paper and I'm just gonna fold it in half lengthwise because it's almost gonna act as a funnel. And you can use a Ziploc bag for this too, but I prefer to use it this way. What you're gonna do is take all this out of here. And the whole objective of this is to try to get it as finely milled as possible. Like you don't want any chunks or anything, but you see how all this is kind of like heavy chunks. You're gonna wanna chop those up. That's why the owner of the Artist Kit Company highly suggests that you put it into like a plastic bag and like work it around that way. But I found this method to be a little bit easier. I'm gonna take the spatula here and just basically like mush it down like this. I know a bunch of you guys are nervous about repressing things into pans because obviously you have to destroy the original product. I promise you it actually is really worth it. I just uh, was not expecting to have to repress these so soon. Now that everything is pretty finely milled, I'm gonna set this aside and then we're only going to use the this um, larger one, obviously, because it's a square. So I'm gonna use this guy right here. I'm gonna set it down into there. Take this, use my palm, and then I'm gonna press all the way down. So then now it's sitting at the bottom right here. Then all you're gonna do is take your powder, and then I'm gonna put it right in here. So I usually take my spatula and I kinda put it to all four corners just to make sure it's evenly dispersed. And then I just tap it on the counter a little bit. This is where the clear wrapping comes into play. I usually have to cut out little squares or rectangles or whatever it is. Go ahead and set it on top of here. And then I'm gonna take the top of the mold again, put it right on top. Then I'm gonna go with the Arbor Press. I like to put a hard surface underneath here because otherwise when you press down with this, it dents the pan underneath. Put this right under. As you can see, you can kind of like rotate the handle of it. So I'm gonna slide it out. And then all I'm gonna do is press with all my weight and you wanna do it with all of your force. So I go ahead and put my palm on the back since it's not actually like, you know, sticking to the table or anything. And then I'm just gonna push. Shift this back. I'm gonna get this guy out. All you do is just push down with your thumbs and you wanna push the pan all the way through it. So it comes out on the bottom. Take the pan out. And that is what it looks like. And then usually you wanna give it a few taps. And as long as nothing comes out or looks like it's going to crack or anything, then you did a really good job at repressing it. So yeah, that is pretty much how the repressing process works in case you guys are wondering. Um, so I'm pretty much just going to be doing that for the next several hours. And then I think I'll just touch base with you guys whenever I am all done with it and then ready to move on to the touch-up kits. Also really quickly, I don't think I mentioned this to you guys, but my husband installed cane lights up in the ceiling here. So now it's real bright in here whenever I have not enough daylight in here for my bridal previews or just appointments that come to my house. Nice to have an electrician as a husband. So I'll put little clips of him doing the whole entire process. Okay, I finally got my kit all together and finally packed. Had to repress all the powders, as I mentioned, and boom, super proud of myself. I think it took me maybe, I wanna say like three hours, but that was also with a break. I packed my bride's contract for tomorrow. And then I also got together all the touch-up kits. I was going to do that on camera, but then I figured that you guys are probably tired of seeing me do touch-up kits after a while because I do them in like every one of my vlogs. These are all the ones that I have and it looks like a hot mess here. <laughs> I did pack two extras because I always like to pack extras just in case people add on at the last minute. I packed the bride's touch-up kit, which obviously has the most things. 
and then I also can link up a video up above in what I include in them. And then I did more simplified versions for the Junior Bridesmaids and also the Flower Girl as well. I at least wanted to include their lip color in there, but since they're not paying for a full application, I just don't want to include like every single thing that I include in the rest of the applications. So I just include my business cards and their lip sample kit, and then also a couple of doe foot applicators. So I have 10 kits all together, and then I have the two extras, so there's 12. Well, I thought I wasn't going to be vlogging anymore, but my husband's actually out doing a bonfire now, and there are fireworks shooting off from our backyard. The benefits about living outside the city limits, no restrictions. No burning the hands. We need the hands. Oh, there's fireworks. Look at the fireworks. <gasps> look at them, look. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, so pretty. Okay, you got a little bit more flames going on there. You men, you make fire. Pretty. Oh, there's a lot of them. I finally get to use my s'more set. I'm so excited. There's some little s'more sticks here. This one says some more the better. And then it comes with a little holder. Look at how cute this thing is. Morning guys, don't mind me just bumming it. It is currently Sunday morning. I feel like I got hit with a truck last night. Yeah, I just hope that I freaking like wake up here. I was kind of yelling last night, so I feel like my voice is kind of gone. I hope you guys had a really great 4th of July weekend. Today I have a larger wedding party, but I'm not doing it myself. I have a secondary artist that is coming with me. I'm actually going to Union 12 again. <laughs> Um, you guys are literally going to be like, what in the world? Yeah, literally, I work at Union 12 so freaking often. When it comes to secondary artists or assistants or something, I made a whole entire bridal pricing video. It actually, for some reason, wasn't super popular on my channel, so I'm not sure how many people actually know it exists because <laughs> it didn't have as many views as I thought it would on it. So I'm thinking that some of you guys probably don't know it exists, but I did make a bridal pricing video. Whether the secondary artist provides touch-up kits normally or she doesn't, I will provide them no matter what. So I'll provide the touch-up kits for the clients that she's doing as well. And then if I am her secondary artist, she provides them for me. Ugh, like what is going on here? <laughs> I woke up with a bad hair day and it's just gonna keep getting worse. I um, remember that I cleaned my brushes last night so I had to put all my brushes back in my brush belt. See, the one fear that I have whenever I go on site is that I forget my whole entire brush belt for some reason just because it's like completely separate from my actual makeup kit. I am going to go ahead and pick this guy up here and then we are going to go into the bathroom. In case you guys are wondering how many brushes that I have for the four people that I worked on yesterday, Literally, this is the amount of brushes that I have. These are my personal ones right here. So it's really like just mainly this back half. Whenever I have like a minimal amount of people, I always feel like I use like so many more brushes than I need to. I feel like since I realistically won't go through that amount of brushes, I just, you know, keep picking up new brushes every single time. All right, done with that. I just set my brush belt by my bag this time so I wouldn't forget it or anything. Then I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the makeup. And I know that I said all these things, but now when you're with her, I can see that, that you miss me. Would you stay till the morning light, or would you follow me? I really did not do that much. I mainly did face makeup, just to give a little healthy bronze glow moment here. And then literally I just put on mascara. Like I do not have time to like put on eyes or anything. More like I don't have the energy to put on eyes. Okay, I'm officially dressed and ready to go here. Oh my gosh, I look so tan. Did I even match my foundation correctly? I basically just have on um, this top right here. I've had it freaking forever, but I like to kind of go sleeveless in the summertime because I hate being restricted by anything. And then of course I have black jeans on and then I'll eventually put on some sandals. And yeah, that is pretty much going to be my outfit for the day. So I'll just check in with you guys when I'm headed to the venue. All right, I'm on my way to Union 12 right now, just trying to avoid trains if I can. Got everything that I packed for yesterday pretty much. Again, Union 12 has the most perfect setup. And I'm also really sorry if this video is going to seem very repetitive, considering that I'm at the same venue back to back, which like hardly ever happens. Just 
want the mood to be right Keeping the low in the night, yeah So long Since I get a glimpse of a light It's blurring out my eyes Oh, oh, we should open up a window Oh, oh, I can't see clear Oh, oh, at least I know how to window To window Cause it's just my habits I can't describe it work with especially the bride's mom she really enjoyed it and also one of the bridesmaids too and I was so happy to have a secondary artist there I got everyone's application except for one of the bridesmaids that wasn't okay with me filming which is completely fine I'm gonna go ahead and actually end off the vlog now because there's really nothing else that I have to do besides just like clean up my makeup kit so if you guys stayed all the way till the end don't forget to give me a big thumbs up as well as also hitting that subscribe button if you guys have not already I do upload a ton of makeup artist related content tips vlogs etc as always I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video all right bye